get your buzz on? Sports Buzz is here to take all calls and answer all questions about your favorite team, coach, or player, local, regional, and national. Sports Buzz, taking calls and kicking game. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday Sports uh, Sports Buzz Super Bowl post-game show. Right here, uh, every Sunday night, 11 to 12, I'm your host, Greg Brom. This is Louisville's original live TV sports talk show. Joining me tonight, uh, happy to have Perrin Johnson, former University of Louisville basketball player and local TV personality. Perrin, your first time on the show. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. You know, it's always a good time to talk sports. I mean, who doesn't like to talk sports? People do in the office anyway. So, yeah, I'm happy to be here. All right, great. And this is your first chance to react to the Super Bowl. Confetti. I'm surprised the confetti's not raining down on us tonight. I wish we were actually on site there after the great time we had at the Sugar Bowl uh, in New Orleans where the uh, Baltimore Ravens hold on 34-31. You know, Perrin, if this show is not going very well, I'm going to have Derek, our floor manager, just turn the lights off. Just pull the plug. (laughs) We'll start it all over because it seemed like after the lights went out, uh, Baltimore returns the, the, the kickoff for a touchdown. Lights go out. Different ball game after that. San Francisco was back in the game like that. It was almost like they went and took a nap and came back in from the locker room. You know, it was funny to see that because I was sitting there thinking to myself, maybe John Harbaugh needs to put Alex Smith in the game. Yeah. The way Kaepernick was playing. So it was very it was very exciting to see the game change, the momentum change. And it was making for a very interesting game because a lot of people where I was at, they left where we were at. So. Yeah, you know what? I thought that for a second. I go, man, Harbaugh was, had the guts enough to put Kaepernick in in the first place. Mm-hmm. Does he have the guts to pull him in the second half yes. and try Alex Smith if nothing else? is? He probably does because he seems like he doesn't care uh, what people think. Uh, but Kaepernick got it going, and you know what? He got it going not really with the zone read running mm-hmm. game, just with typical drop-back passing. He yes. really, uh, in the second half, was on the money from the pocket. I mean, he, he made a lot of great throws. Uh, a couple of those were dropped. Vernon, Vernon Davis, oh. he made a, he had a key drop in the right game. Right out of uh, fingertips. Yes, and, um, you know, I thought that was a heck of a play. So did Michael Cap- Crabtree as well. But you know what? I mean, they just, the Ravens, I don't know how they do it. It's like they will their self to victory. Like, no matter what happens, no matter how high the mountain is, they always find a way to get past everything and win the best. All right, our number, 964-2121. We're watching a few clips uh, from the game today as Baltimore had a huge 28-6 lead. And uh, you're talking about how they will themselves to victory. Ray Lewis seems that he had the magic, the mojo with him throughout the postseason. They went at Denver. They went at New England. They beat San Francisco, who I think, even though the spread was tight, they were the favorite in the game. They had the better roster, people thought. But... Joe Flacco, I mean, this guy, has he proved himself? Is he up there? Where would you rank him in quarterbacks in the NFL right now? Has he put himself in the top five? Uh, it's tough, you know. The top, I mean, when I think of top five guys, it's obviously Peyton. It's, um, you know, Tom Brady, yeah. Eli Manning. Maybe Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. And then, you know, you know who I like because he reminds me of Brett Favre a little bit. I like Jay Cutler. Because he's willing to take a risk. He's the next guy that needs to break through yes. into, into this level. Absolutely, but he's not there yet. You know, I, I could. He's there, but I don't. Joe Flack, Joe Flacco, in my opinion, is a great game manager. Yeah. I don't feel like he's hit that point where he's really like he's moved me to think he's a great quarterback. Yet. I tell you, I tell you, one time tonight though that he really showed some guts was, uh, I think they were up two in the fourth quarter and they had a third and one. And everybody's thinking they're going to run the ball. And San Francisco is about ready to blitz the house. And he audibles to a pass. And he throws that back shoulder fade to Bolden, who had a beast of a game, Antoine Antoine Bolden. And Bolden comes down with it. I thought it was a huge, gutsy play by the quarterback on third and one to make that throw. And, and, you know, throughout the playoffs, Flacco, I don't think he threw a pick. He was money throughout the playoffs. No, I mean, at the the end of the day, he gets so much, like, People knock him so much for what he is. But, I mean, he just keeps on pushing, keeps on chipping away, keeps on chipping away, and he makes plays. And you can't knock him in for making plays. And that's what you ask your quarterback to do. I tell you what, the last drive, San Francisco's moving down the field. They got to the five. And, you know, it's, it's tough, to, tough to say when you get down that close. I think there was second down play, and they ran a rollout pass, and then they, mm-hmm. I, and they ran a quick three-step drop for Kaepernick. And I was thinking, you know what, why aren't they, you know, they should run, they should run that option. Mm-hmm. Why, why are they not running him 
uh, like they had all the way down the field. I think a couple of plays there, they got away from what they were doing. Yes. And it put them in a bind on, made, made them have to make a fourth down throw and a third down, you know, fourth down fade throw. But I thought they got out of their what they were doing well right down there in the goal line. I think the, I feel like the Ravens put eight in a box at times yeah. almost to make them throw. And I just believe they're believing Ed Reed back there just trying to make plays. You know, it's hard to run on that defense. No matter, everybody says the Ravens are too slow or they're too old. But at, yet again, they always make plays and stop people. Yeah, they, they do. They do. And they win the Super Bowl. I mean, the Baltimore Ravens um, came from really a, at the end of the regular season, lost four, I think, of the last five games. Yes. Did it on the road. Mm-hmm. Win the Super Bowl for Ray Lewis in his uh, last uh, his last. What a, what a way to go out on top. What a way to go out on yes, top. Yes. So the Ravens win. We want to hear from you. 964-2121. What did you think of the game? What were the key parts? What were the, what, how big a factor were the lights? How about the commercials? Were there any that stood out to you, uh, Perrin? Any commercials that stood out to you? I, I didn't. The yes. only one I can think of is the model kissing the, the dork. Yes. That's about the only one I, I can remember. It actually got kind of uncomfortable watching, yes. <laughs> watching yes. that. Yes, the, but, whoever did that, that go, da- <laughs> go daddy, shame on you. That was terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible. Don't do that to us again, yes. please. But I did like the um, the Doritos commercial with the goat. I like that. The the Audi commercial with the kid, he takes the, the Audi to, to the prom, yeah. to kiss the girl that's the prom queen, gets beat up by her boyfriend, yeah, yeah. and just keeps on going like he's the happiest man alive. That was that was my favorite by far. You know, uh, the Doritos had another neat one, I thought, when the stain of, I don't know if you saw oh, it, there was Joe stain Montana. of my Joe Montana, yes, yes. and then they paid homage to the to the stain. Yes. Uh, I thought that was kind of... Yeah, Montana land in his front yard, that was, uh, uh, that was uh, Yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of, you know, Perrin land. That's <laughs> where, that's, we're all just part of your world. My <laughs> Perrin Johnson with us tonight. I wish tonight. that was the case. <laughs> 964 2121. Give us a call. React to the Super Bowl. Also today, Louisville, a big win, 70 to 51 over Marquette. In a game I thought would be a lot closer, Perrin. I, I really thought this was going to be one of those where at the end you, you it's a, a coin flip and uh, maybe Louisville gr- uh, grits it out. But, man, they were in control almost the entire game. You know, we came out flat when you watched that game. And then Montrez Harrell checks in the game and he changes the whole tone of the game. We, he took over with a re guy, came in, first play of the game, gets a rebound, goes up and dunks it off an offensive rebound. Over 50% of his plays are dunks. I, I tell you what, and when he dunks it, that's why I like when he's in there. That energizes us because he doesn't just like barely grab the rim and yes. tap it in. He just rips the rips the whole goal down. He try, he's like he's trying to tear it off, and he try, it's, it's funny because once he did that, Russ started going. Uh, Wayne made a couple of shots. You know, even Shane was missing some easy butt baskets, but he was offensive rebounding. That was good. Yeah. The effort level changed from the whole team. That's what the main thing I like to see from him. You know what? The bench was more involved today. You mentioned Montrez. Uh, Van Trees played a lot. Yes. I, I mean, maybe Rick thought that Marquette wasn't very athletic. <laughs> so, I mean, it seems like Van Trees only plays when he when the other yes. team isn't really athletic. But Van Trees played a whole lot. Got a lot uh, of production, I thought, from him. Uh, Blackshear had a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. Made some plays. But it, the bench, how, how important do you think the bench is for this team? I think they're better when they're rolling them in and out. I think that's what separates us, to be honest with you. Because when you look at us as a team, there's going to be foul trouble in games. And some teams, you know, if Kentucky loses New Orleans Noel, they're in trouble. They lose Willie Cauley Stein. If they lose Archie Goodwin to foul trouble, they're in trouble. But when you look at our team, if Luke Hancock gets in trouble with foul trouble, we're okay. If, you know, Kevin Ware gets into foul trouble, we're okay. If Wayne Blackshear, whatever, we, we'll be okay. So I think we can sustain a blow like that. And you never know who's going to score 20 for us. I think Steven Van Treese played one of the best defensive games he's played probably in his whole career at U of L tonight. Yeah. All right. Our number nine six four twenty one twenty one. You have a comment about the Super Bowl about Louisville. A question for Perrin Johnson. Give us a call. We're gonna. We'll see you on the other side of this commercial break. The Sunday Sports Bus presented by LivingForLess.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. So with Dish's new Harper, now we can record six shows at the same time. See, my show's recording. 
So's mine. So's mine. So's mine. So's mine. Congratulations. Now you can start cooking, cleaning, leaving, and jogging. I really don't have to leave, do I? I'm certainly not going jogging. Dish introduces The Hopper, a whole home HD DVR that lets you record up to six shows at once and play them back in any room. And it's free when you sign up for Dish. Gotta, gotta get you, get you, rally, Small in gotta, size gotta, gotta takes the prize. Rally's new flavor loaded boxes get you, get you, rallies, rallies, with new gotta, fish bites. Crispy and delicious wild caught Alaskan fish or chicken bites. Juicy white meat chicken in poppable bites. Top off the box with seasoned fries. Your choice, fish or chicken, just gotta, two gotta, bucks. Get you, get Set your rallies, sights rallies, on gotta, bites. Get Only at on, Rally's. Get feast feast on. on. Don't forget my all time favorite, the Cardinal Combo. Big Buford fries and a drink. I have urgent news. If you have good credit now and a good credit history, you can qualify for a low fixed rate 30 year refinance loan from Mortgage in 15 minutes. They turned my good credit into a great rate. Thank you, Mortgage in 15 minutes. They came through, like they said, in less than 15 minutes. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Call us now for your low fixed rate loan. 1-800-644-9655. All right, welcome back to Sunday Sports Buzz, presented by LivingForLess.org. Your first place to react to the Super Bowl. Baltimore wins an exciting Super Bowl that I think will long be remembered for the lights going out more than anything else. 34-31, to 31, Ray Lewis gets a second Super Bowl title in his last game. Uh, joining me tonight, Perrin Johnson. And Perrin will begin this week on 1450 The Sports Buzz, 4-5 to 5 every weekday, Tune in, listen to Perrin with our good buddy, Trevor Kelsey, and we were just filling Perrin in, wondering if he'd ever done a show with somebody who in his underwear, because, <laughs> because Trevor's just going to make himself at home, he's going to be dipping, spitting juice all over the table, <laughs> just making him see, you know, just show up in his underwear, his PJs, yes. probably camping out overnight in the studio, but y'all get to know each other well, Perrin. Uh, it'll, it'll, make, <laughs> it'll make for good entertainment if you, if you, you want to listen, we will definitely have a good time by all means, me and Trevor always do. All right, 4 or 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. We've got uh, phone lines open, 964-2121. And on the line right now is Tony. Tony, you're up. Tony, you're on the air. You there, Tony? Tony, okay, well, we'll move on from Tony. Uh, uh, we're talking a little bit about the basketball game, Perrin. And Russ Smith... Uh, he, he, again, had a big uh, first half and, and, and finished with 18 points. Peyton had a nice game, but I, I think Russ is the key. I know Coach was trying to send a message the last couple of weeks to Russ. Yes. I, I, I think it just – Rick had been telling himself throughout the first two months, I'm just going to let Russ do his thing. Yes. I think it was just killing him. I was just killing him inside, mm -hmm. and he couldn't take any more. Yes. And he just exploded for about two weeks, and now the Coach has that out of the system – See, I hope he just lets Russ do his thing because the good far outweighs the bad. Yes. What, how important? I mean, is Russ, Russ to me is the most important offensive player. He's the reason that Louisville can score 70. Without Russ, we can't score 70 a game. No, no, we're not. We, we, can't, we don't do a lot of things without Russ. And a lot of people don't give us credit for that. And I think that he needs to get more credit for what he's doing. He's an he's a Oscar Robinson candidate. And there's only 14 players in the country that, that are on that list. Um, you know, he just scores yeah. points in bunches. And a lot of people don't understand that, but he's a volume shooter. That's what he does. So, I mean, you can't knock him for being a volume shooter. Especially know? when he makes as many as he does. He had some great steals. When yes. he gets in transition, he even made some passes today, which yes. is unlike him, but he did. Right. He hit the open guy. I know Peyton was the recipient one time on a fast break. Um, and even Siva today, when, when Peyton scores at all, Louis was a lot better. Yes. And he had 14 points. I think, I think the main thing with him is that I felt like he lost his confidence there for a second, but now I feel like he's gaining that back. So I look, for, I look forward to him to having a, a couple better games. They're going to Rutgers this week. That's a tough place to play. they got good talent. They beat Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh just beat yeah. Syracuse. So obviously the talent level is there. So we'll see what happens with that as far as moving forward, as far as the season goes. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, got some good con contribution from Luke Hancock today. Yeah, hey, Luke has, has found his role. Yes. Uh, I actually personally like him starting in the three spot with Russ at the two. Yes. I know Rick had Russ on the bench and Wayne start, uh, starting, but I like 
Russ's craziness, Luke offsets that, being yes. in the lineup. There you got your steady guy, the guy who's going to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. He'll keep it all together. He's starting to hit that three. Yes. Uh, I think he's the perfect balance to having Russ in the game. So, you know, it takes some pressure off Russ. Russ doesn't have to be the good guy. He can be the bad cop. Let Luke be a good cop and do, do all those, those types of things. What we got on the line, we got uh, uh, Rick on the line. Want to talk to Perrin Johnson. Rick. Hey, man, how's it going, guys? I, I love your show, buddy. I watch it every week. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm with you guys on Russ. Uh, Russ is my favorite player on the team. Uh, I would like to see Wayne Blackshear, though, shoot more. I think, I don't have a stat sheet in front of me, but isn't he our best three-point shooter uh, percentage-wise? He might be. I mean, he's been a good uh, jump shooter. Yes, yeah, he, 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 Wayne is our, our best, for field goal percentage-wise, he is our best three-point shooter. Yeah, he needs to shoot more of that. And, uh, but Russ, I mean, I love Russ. And when Rick pitched him a couple of weeks ago or whatever it was, I was beside myself because how can you, so take, your, uh, how can you take your best high-point high player and bench him, Karen, as you know? And, I mean, I've never played at your level or anything like that, but playing ball since I'm six years old, you practice your butt off to start. Right. And you may come out in the media and say, oh, well, I'm fine doing this, I'm fine doing it. I don't believe that at all. So I with think, that, uh, you've got a great point there, Rick. What, what was Coach, what's, what, was, what was behind that with Coach? What, was he, what message was he trying to send? Uh, you know what, I think it was a combination of things. We weren't playing good basketball. Yeah. And I think what he was trying to do was trying to figure out what to do. I don't necessarily agree with what he did with that. I think... Um, you know, like Rick just said, Wayne Blackshear, I think, needs to be more assertive at times to get the ball. Um, in my opinion, watching them play, I feel like Peyton over dribbles yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of times. And, you know, nothing, no, not to knock Peyton, I think Peyton's a good point guard. Um, if you ask me who the best point guard is. Passing around a little bit more. Yes, I mean, get, get the, the ball, ball moving, get it hopping, make the defense shift, because if he's dribbling the ball, it's almost like he's dribbling the ball into a coma. And... It's too much standing around, and guys are just standing, and it causes us to it kills a lot of things. You know what? And that's one thing I noticed watching Indiana on Saturday night when they come across the mid court line. Mm -hmm. Offensively, they're they got some rhythm going. I mean, they're they're moving the ball, cutting yes. the pat. The ball is moving side to side. Yes, I mean, they're exactly. really fluid on offense. I mean, I think if Louisville, we'll talk about that a little later yeah. in the show. One of our topics tonight, I was going to ask you about Louisville matching up against the IU's of the world, but I think Louisville's defense makes anybody look bad. Uh, and uh, but. You're right. A little more ball movement, I think, probably could. What about Wayne? Have you see, you've seen him play probably, yes. you know, off the the game court in yeah. practice and maybe in the gym in the summer. It looks to me like he's become just a jump shooter. And 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 I think a lot of fans would like to see him the slashing Wayne. Yes. Slashing. Does he have that in his game? Or are we just hoping? I, I, he does have that in his game. The part of the reason is Peyton dribbles the ball a lot. Russ dribbles the ball a lot. So Luke and Wayne's role is going to be a lot of times knocking down jump shots. Because if Russ is dribbling the ball and then he passes it to, to Peyton and Peyton is dribbling the ball, he's going to attack too. And then so you're going to have a wing that's going to be in the corner somewhere that's going to shoot the ball, just like kind of like Kyle did. People always say, I want to see Kyle put the ball on the floor. Well, Peyton's dribbling the ball for 25 seconds off the shot clock. So obviously <laughs> Kyle's not going to dribble the ball. So, I mean, you got to be real with yourself. So, I mean, but that's what the main thing. I, don't, I think if we get the ball hopping more, you know, like you said, Indiana. Indiana averages, I think they're third in the country in points per game. Yeah. And then Michigan was fifth. So it was really great to see that game and how they did those things. All right, let's go to Herb real quick before we uh, head to break. Herb, you're up on the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln Buzz Line. All right, hey, guys. Parent, good to see you again, man. Uh, Herb Gaines. Appreciate it, appreciate it. All right, uh, I, I just think that, you know, Louisville, they've got a lot of talent. I think you guys are just hitting on it. I've seen Wayne play, and I'm just waiting for this kid to just break out. I mean, I think that, you know, Peyton's going to do what he does. Russ is going to do what he does. They need another guy. I always thought that last year Wayne was the, the best talent on the team, just, you know, just injury prone. So I think if he gets going, man, I think sky's the limits for this team. So I appreciate you guys' time, Parent. Again, good to see you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I tell you what, I mean, is it, and you, I think you brought up a good point with Peyton dribbling the ball and then Russ dribbling the ball. Yes. It, it looks to me like Wayne won't really come into his own. He's a role player on this team. Yes. That he won't become a star until some of those other guys are gone. Just because he needs to be more of the focus. And, and this, this team has a lot of parts. I don't know if Wayne fits. He can't stand, he can't make himself stand out in this crowd. I don't know. 
Is he a, what's his personality like? Is he assertive? He doesn't seem as assertive on the court. I mean, he speaks up when spoken to. Yeah. And, he, and he, if he has something to say, he'll definitely say his piece. I just think that, like you said, I mean, it's kind of hard when you watch the Louisville play because you want to see, like, I want to see Montrez get more rebounds. Yeah. But it's hard because Montrez, with his minutes per game, you, he has, you have to, you cannot not play Shane. Shane's a, a talented kid yes. in his own right. And yes. he has a, he's a, he's an NBA potential player. So he's going to have a chance. So, I mean, it's hard. Then you look at that situation. Then you look at other situations like, well, you want to see Wayne get more shots. Well, then you got to take Russ off the court. You got to take Luke off the court. So, I mean, and a lot of the Louisville fans are hard on Luke right now because he hasn't been playing great. And I, I hear that all the time. And, um, but the main thing is those guys, I feel like, will grow into roles as guys get out of here and other guys come in. So we'll see what happens with that far as that goes. All right, our number, 964-2121. Give us a call. The Osmore Ford Lincoln Buzz Line. We'll be back in a moment more with Perrin Johnson, the Sunday Sports Bus, presented by livingforless.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Jim Weeks. At MaxCare, no project is too big. We have the capabilities to handle the smallest residential project to the largest commercial undertaking. We even clean big houses like this one. And everyone has been abuzz about our amazing four years for $99 special. We want to let everyone know that MaxCare also cleans upholstery, ceramic tile, and air ducts. We also install and refinish hardwood floors dust-free. MaxCare, locally owned and family operated. Give us a call, 636-4629. Get everything you need to make that old ride look new again at Smart Shoppers, the region's largest auto body supplier, providing you the full line of professional grade materials at the best prices around. Paint like the pros with a full line of House of Color paint products only at Smart Shoppers, because this is how you roll. If everything's coming at you, you're in the wrong lane. Rooster here. There are two ways to go through life. The first is to get yourself all tied up and done, scurrying here and there. The second is to pace yourself. Every once in a while, you gotta sit back and enjoy the fruits of your labor. That's when I head on over to Roosters. I just love the wait stack. It doesn't matter what kind of mood I'm in when I arrive. They make sure it's adjusted by the time I leave. When it's time to pull out of the fast lane, make it Roosters. A fun, casual joint. Now, Life Alert can also protect you in a fire emergency. Whether it's fire danger, a serious fall, or other type of emergency, Life Alert is there for you. Thanks to Life Alert, you can live alone without ever being alone. And that's why I wear one. All senior citizens should have Life Alert. Please call 1-800-784-9966 for free information about Life Alert, or visit us on the web at the address on your screen. Get all the secrets from your favorite local restaurants, Sundays at 4, weeknights at 6. And see them all in high def on Insight Channel 916. Secrets of Louisville Chefs on location at all your favorite local hotspots. And secrets live from Sullivan University's Kitchen Theater. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs takes you across the state. It's new local TV on the air and online at newlocaltv.com. All local, all positive, and now in HD, only on Ion 21. Get all the secrets Sundays at 4, weeknights at 6. Greg Brom here, the Sunday Sports Bus, presented by livingforless.org. We're here every Sunday night from 11 to 12. Please tune in. We thank you for viewing and watching every week and calling in. Our number, 964-2121. With me tonight, the host of his own show now on 1450 The Sports Buzz. His back's going to get, your back's going to get real tired, Kerry and Trevor Kelsey, five days a week from four to five. But you'll have, you'll, you'll, you're all going to have some fun. I'm going to definitely tune in. <laughs> Trevor Kelsey, Baron Johnson, four to five on 1450, the Sports Buzz. And we're taking your calls, talking Louisville and the Super Bowl. We're going to talk Kentucky and IU here momentarily. But Keith, you're up. Hey, what's up, fellas? What's hey, going Keith. On? Hey, man. I, I, Perrin, I know you know Coach a little bit better since you played for him, man. Uh, what do you think it is, man, with uh, certain guards that play for Louisville? It seems like, man, like even with Sosa, you know what I'm saying? It seems like they start off good playing for Coach, and it seems like, man, by the time they get to be seniors, it seems like they kind of go into some type of stupor. You know what I'm saying? It seems like they start off red hot, 
And then as the years progress, seem like they kind of like just, they get like brain dead or something, you know what I'm saying? Like Siva, you know what I'm saying? He start off, you know, seem like instead of, instead of, instead of progressing, seem like, you know what I'm saying, he loses his jump shot, and then they lose their dribbling ability, uh, uh, to take it to the hole, you know, instead of getting, to be a, instead of being progressively better, seem like they get worse. When, you know, you take Duke guards, for instance, you know what I'm saying, seem like they get, you know what I'm saying, just locked down better in all phases of the game. I just don't understand it about coaches' guards, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I think it's a combination of two things. Uh, the first thing is I think Peyton is pressing too much. Because he's a senior, he wants to get drafted, he wants to win a national championship. You know, this team went to a Final Four, so they got that taste in their mouth. So I think, they're, I think he's pressing to make sure he does good. If you ever watch Peyton, when he makes the mistake, watch his face, and he puts his chin in his neck, and he's upset. But I mean, he, um, but he doesn't show a whole lot of emotion. But I think part of the reason why he hasn't played great like people when, you, when I say great, I mean like the kid at Michigan, Trey Burke. He's playing. He's the best point guard in the country. He's playing by far great basketball. I think he's just pressing too much. The other thing is people have too much video on Louisville. Louisville, UK, UCLA, schools like that, people are going to scout you. So by the time people see Louisville, they have 15 to 16 films by the time the Big East schedule comes around. So they know your tendencies. There's another thing that a lot of people don't know about. It's called synergy. Synergy breaks down every NBA game and every college game on TV. So it, it tells you the percentage of how many times you go right, how many times you oh, go man. left. That's all coaches needed with yeah. something like that. Oh, my God, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Like Dwight Howard, I mean, I was talking to Ray John Rondo. He was telling me about synergy. When they would play Dwight Howard, he's going to take, he's going to rip through right. To, if you cut him off, he's going to spin to the left. So every time they know he makes a move, he's going to spin to the either shoulder. So that's how Kendrick Perkins would give Dwight Howard a lot of problems. So if you can imagine, they know that. The guys know if Peyton Siva goes right, he's going to try to turn the corner and go to the hole. If he goes say. left, he's going to pull up. Peyton's not that hard to figure out. Right? Yes. I mean, just his game. He's yeah. got his things he does well, and he does them over and over again. Let me ask you about that, too, because it always comes up where what Keith said. You know, you have somebody come in, and maybe he won't say the time that our fan base thinks he should see early on. Yes. And Coach will say something about the system. He just hasn't caught on to our system. He doesn't right. know it well. The scouting reports. How complicated is I mean... Talk about the scouting uh, uh, scenarios and, and how complicated are, is the scouting process at Louisville for someone to pick up and the system? Because it seems like that yeah. system, it must be really com complicated because these guys, it takes a couple of years. Yeah, it's, it was a motion Princeton offense that he runs. I could sit here and tell you yeah. how, how it will work, but it's a lot yeah. of intricate things. But, I mean, the main thing, you, get, you have to learn the plays, not on offense, but on defense. Yeah. And we have over 80 sets. Maybe we have over really? yeah we have over 120 plays, and that's not even that's on not de even, on, def on defense. I just, that's just offense. On offense, yeah. Yeah, I'm not even talking about defense, yeah. and I'm not talking about sideline out of bounds or underneath yeah. out of bounds plays. Yeah, okay. Then you have the fact that so once you figure out the play, then you got to learn more than one spot because you might play off guard, you might play small forward. You got to learn those things, and then on top of that, you got to know where are scenarios that you can get your shots off and score in those scenarios. So that's a lot to take in as a freshman. And the other thing is a lot of people don't understand is that, I mean, it's just a learning curve of not being, learning to play that hard constantly yeah. and, to, and to be consistent. Having a motor all, the whole time. Yes, be fluid and consistent all the time. So, I mean, and the other thing, people always say, well, why, like, like he was just saying, that nobody um, was, you know, the guys get worse and worse and worse. Well, that's because when Juan Palacios, perfect example, People are like, Juan Palacios was such a great freshman. What happened to him in sophomore year? Well, that's because Juan Palacios wasn't on the scouting report. It was, you need to stop Francisco Garcia, Taekwon Dean, and yeah. Ellis Miles, and Larry O'Bannon. So Juan got to live off the fruits of those guys' labor. Yes. So now people are like, you have to stop Juan Palacios. Oh, it gets a little harder. So you got to find ways to develop your game so you can find ways to score. That's a good point. Good point right there. Let's go to uh, Chris on the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln buzz line. Chris, you're up with Perrin Johnson. Hey, what's going on, Perry? What's going on, buddy? How you doing? I just got three quick things I want to ask about and get your take on them. Um, number one, one of the things I just listened to what you had to say about Siva, it seems like the teams are playing Siva more to pass, which, you know, that's interesting because sometimes it seems like the guys can't handle his passes even if they're right in his hand, their hands. 
But I remember last year and the year before, a lot of times he was going to the hole and finishing, finishing right-handed, finishing left-handed, and it seems like he's not really, uh, you know, looking to do that much anymore, maybe because he feels like he's got better players now. But I'm just wondering about him, <clears throat> why he's not going to the hole finishing more. The second thing I wanted to ask about is, who you who you think is really we're really going to lose this year? I know we're going to lose Siva, but is there a really legitimate chance that we could also lose uh, Shane and also uh, Gorgie Jean? And the last thing I just want to mention, I want to get your take on. Every time we've went to the Final Four, we've always had clutch free throw shooting. Even '86, Jeff Hall, Mitt Wagner, and you know a few years ago we had Garcia, Dean, and Larry O'Bannon, which were all 80 percent and above. And this year, that's the only thing about this team that uh. You know, gives me a little bit of question. Every time we went to the Final Four, we said good free throw shooting, which is really, you know, important in closing out tight games. Yeah. So I want to get your take on those three things. Uh, we, well, you know, the first, the first thing, um, you, you touched on a lot of things. Forgive me if I forget one. <laughs> I, um, I can't remember what the first thing was. But I mean, as far as losing guys, I think we I think we'll lose. And this is my honest opinion. People might think I'm crazy. I think Russ is out of here. I don't think I don't know if he can duplicate the year he's having. I right think now. he should go if I he's going to get drafted. That's yes. me. I want him to stay. But. I, yeah, I would love to see him stay here, but I think Russ yeah. should go. Uh, Gorgie's 23 years old. It doesn't make. I don't know how much he can improve his stock to be drafted. He's a mid to lo- he's a mid lottery, the first round draft pick. Gorgie goes. Shane has the body to be an NBA player in the right system. I think he'll be perfect. But I think if we have a good year and a good season, I think Shane's out of here. I think Peyton's going to wheel himself to a second. Second round draft pick, because Peyton is a good kid, and um, I mean, and then that's about it right there. I don't think Wayne's going anywhere. Oh, if all those guys leave, though, boy, that's uh, yeah, that's a big, that'd be a big blow for for next year's absolutely uh, team. But I think Montrez needs more minutes, yeah. so we'll see what happens. Okay, all right, we're taking your calls nine six four twenty one twenty one. Be back in a moment. The Sunday Sports Buzz presented by LivingForLess.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. two things I've learned in the almost 20 years of doing business. First, every Cajun has their own secret recipe to a good gumbo. And second, I never claim to be better than mama's cooking. We've been cooking up true Cajun for a long time now, and I think we're starting to win over some moms. Well, there might be a few tough moms out there yet to convince, but we're making progress. Stop in today and see for yourself how we measure up to moms. Joe's okay by you. It's okay by me. I mean mama. All right, we're here waiting to hear from you. 964-2121, the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln buzz line. We're reacting to the Super Bowl. The Baltimore Ravens win the Super Bowl 34-31, to a, a unique, interesting football game. 22-point comeback by, uh, or they were down 22, the 49ers, yes. but couldn't get all the way back yes. uh, to catch the Baltimore Ravens. And uh, Louisville winning today. Don, uh, where's that team been, Karen Johnson? Where is that? That's the team. Remember three weeks ago, everybody was saying Louisville's the best team in the country. Yeah. Then Louisville seems to follow the familiar script of late January swoon, where yeah. everything falls apart and they reinvent themselves. Yes. This was the first time we've seen we see, we have seen that team that was here in December, and. Are, uh, now back then we thought Louisville was the best team in the country. Mm-hmm. How good are they? The, the addition that we saw today, how good is that team? Are they a top 
four team, top five team. What do you think? Uh, you know, I think they're gonna play. The I think they're they're got they got to get back in their groove. Right now, when you watch teams that are playing really well, Indiana's in stride. Michigan, you know, they took Indiana's lumps. I mean, it's you know, it's hard to play there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a hard place to play. So I mean, that's basically home court advantage. The Big Ten is the toughest conference by far. So, but I mean, I think right now, Louisville fans always get mad. Like, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? But we never play good around this time of no. year. So I don't really think Louisville fans need to worry so much about what's going on right now. And it's the Big East. Like, for example, Providence went into Villanova today, and they beat Villanova at Villanova. So, I mean, that just goes to show wow. you that how tough our conference yeah, is. Yeah, Prov- I mean, Villanova beats Syracuse and Louisville. Yes. And they lose to Providence at home. But, it's yeah, I mean, then amazing. you look at, look at um, Rutgers. Rutgers beats Pitt. Pitt beats Syracuse. So it's just a, it's just the way the conference works. It's a it's a battle of the the, the, the Giants. Well, I tell you what, I think Louisville, and we we talked about it last week on the show. I did a little predicting. Now I was a little pessimistic because I think the Big East is rough. I thought Louisville would go 12 and six. Now that would mean three more losses. Yes. Maybe 13. And now I see 13 and five, maybe more. I thought they'd make lose at Notre Dame, mm-hmm. maybe at Syracuse, and then maybe drop one at home. You know, a stumble somewhat, maybe a Cincinnati or something. Right. But I thought that was pretty good. Then win the Big East tournament. I think they win the Big East tournament, they'll get a two seed. Yes. I think Louisville will be a two seed. They'll win the Big East tournament and get a two seed. Do you think they have a shot at a one seed? You know what? Right now, it's very difficult to say that. Right now, if I had to pick today, if the tournament started today, it'd be Florida. Yeah. It'd be um, Indiana. Make a hard case for Kansas. And, you know, maybe, you know, whoever comes out the Big East right now, that's, that's a tough case between Syracuse and us. Yeah, you know what? I'd probably take, and Duke is a team that's beaten Louisville, beaten, yes. even though they got blown out. Miami might win the ACC. It's looking I like I mean, that, it looks yeah. like Miami might win that. They, but. they, they got a dog fight out there. Where they just played um, NC State. Yeah, they just, exactly, exactly. And they won. So they're 8 0 in the ACC. Hey, you, you, Dukes has all these big wins this year, but Miami is leading that conference. I'd probably put Florida, IU, Duke, and you know what? I like Michigan, even yeah, though they have Michigan, Michigan, Michigan is, is, is rolling. Yes. And then I think on the next line, I've got like Kansas, even Gonzaga playing well, yes. Arizona possibly from the West. Great and then you might have the Big East team. Whoever comes out, Syracuse or Louisville, yeah. has the, a two seed. I think that's the eighth team on the top eight. That's what, how I'd see it right now. I hope, we, I hope we can get a one seat so we can play in Indianapolis and possibly oh, around here. Oh, that's be huge, great. I That'd think, for us, great. is to be in Indy for yes, the region. Absolutely. All right, Janice. Janicio, Janicio. Yeah. You're up. I wanted to say that, um, uh, I wanted to say that, Janicio, I wanted to say that uh, the Ravens did a good job and the 49ers still did that thing. They did it. They, it was a good game. You know, it was a, 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 a the Super Bowl has they've been lucky lately to have quality games that yes. go down to the. I mean, for years and years, Perrin, blowout city. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl was a letdown. Yes. Now, for the, probably the last decade, the majority of the time, you've got a really, really good game that, that goes down to the wire, and it just. It reinforces that the NFL uh, rules the world. Yes, <laughs> I mean, the Super Bowl performance was great. I it mean, was awesome. In the whole week of anticipation, you know, you really couldn't have a clear-cut person who said was going to win this game. Everybody they, t- they talked about the game, they were kind of torn. They liked the Ravens, the Ray Lewis story, the Kaepernick story, how he's only had 10 starts and how he's playing so well. That was another thing that played a, played a part in that. So it just really amazes me how – how this all turned out. I thought San Francisco was going to dominate this game. But um, the Ravens, they just found a way. I don't know how they do it. I, I'm still baffled by this. But that's, what, that's the greatest thing about sports. And you also had the Harbaugh story, which kind of took a back seat once the game start, got started uh, uh, developing its own life, mm-hmm. uh, its own storyline. But uh, we watched the kickoff return there. And there, right after that, the lights went out <laughs> in New Orleans. And... Uh, a uh, whole different ball game after the blackout. Uh, San Francisco got a new life. Yes. And, and if you really think about it, Baltimore had the halftime, which was probably 45 minutes. That's then you have the lights for another 40 minutes. It was probably an hour and a half between the time that the Baltimore offense had hit the field from the first half till, after, till the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, this game was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the funny part about it is um, there's so many things. I told my buddy, 
He said he's thinking about drinking games for the Super Bowl. I said, well, you should take a drink every time somebody says hardball and see how that gets you. Um, I don't know how far you're You wouldn't have made it through the first (laughs) pregame show. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So what's even funnier about this whole situation with this family, when you look at it, I feel bad for not the hardballs. I feel bad for Tom Crean because here you are, your brother-in-laws are in the Super Bowl. So you have to go to the Final Four. Just to be in the conversation at the dinner table. Because, you know, if you, if you don't win a championship, nobody wants to talk to you in that family. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you know what? The Super Bowl did go long, but they made sure they were not going to cut into our show tonight. They were not going to cut. They finished in time. that they did. We would, The cameras would have pulled away. CBS would have just left the end to get Perrin and I here on the show. So uh, give us a call, 964-2121. Uh, the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln Buzz Line, and we'll be back in a moment. The Sunday Sports Buzz presented by LivingForLess.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. Landscape of Sports Talk Radio has changed in a big way. 1450 The Sports Buzz brings you the best local shows and national shows in the area. Starting with Mason and Myers in the morning, The Dan Patrick Show, The Freak Show with John Renshaw, and Inside the Press Box, as well as high school, college, and professional games. Sick of the same old watered-down sports talk? Look no further than 1450 The Sports Buzz and 1450thesportsbuzz.com. let computer problems get you down. Call Igloo On-Site Computer Repair. Our award-winning service staff can help you. Residential or business, drop off or on-site, we can fix it. Igloo On-Site Computer Repair. Visit us online or call us to schedule an appointment today. I thought all cleaning services were the same until Molly made my carpets fresh, until Molly made my bathroom glow, until Molly made my kitchen shine. I thought all cleaning services were too expensive until Molly made my day. Now, meet the cleaning professionals that work as hard as you do. Call this number for your free in-home consultation and customized estimate. Wow, Molly made was here. It is February, so the countdown begins to bracketology, and I think you can actually now start talking about seeding and who gets in and the dreaded bubble. Yes. We will talk bubble in the next few weeks here on the Sunday Sports Buzz. And joining me tonight, Perrin Johnson. And we've been talking a lot about Louisville, Perrin. But uh, Kentucky, with uh, two big wins, and especially at Ole Miss, I mean, they were playing, you could tell they were playing for their lives. I mean, they really were playing for, to survive the season. I mean, they, you could tell urgency. That's how I could ex- yeah. uh, characterize the way they played at Ole Miss. And, you know, they're going to get a bunch of wins and probably feel real good at them, about themselves as we yes. head into tournament time. What do you think about the Cats? You know what? I'll tell you what. They won't be a 1-2 two, two or a 3 seed, but they'll be somewhere between, I want to say, 5 and 8, 5 uh-huh. and 9. Nobody's going to want to play them. I, I wouldn't want to play them. I wouldn't be surprised if Louisville had to play him at some point, which would be fun and awesome. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I, I think they just have so many pieces. And, you know, the more experience these kids are getting, they're getting a lot, a lot better. Lawrence Noel is playing some really good wow. basketball these last two games. And when you watch that Ole Miss game, they played like they didn't want to get embarrassed. I felt like Cal probably told them, if you don't come out and bring it, you're going to get embarrassed. And that's the thing with a young group of kids. They need to learn how to focus in and time after time. So, I think they didn't focus on the first time they played A&M, and that's why they got blown out, and the kid went for 40, else they turned him for 40 points. Well, two road wins. I mean, they they beat A&M. I mean, they can't hold a lead very well, but no. that's a young team. I mean, Louisville has their issues with the lead yes. as well, uh, but they were able to pull out the victory uh, both times. And Noel, I tell you what, this guy, 
He's probably going to be the number one pick in the draft. Yes. Uh, his shot blocking is, he's a dominating presence. And uh, how good, compare him to, uh, if Anthony Davis was a, a 10, what is Noel? Let's scale him 1 I'd, to 10. I'd say he's, uh, because his ceiling is so high, he can get so much better. I'm going to give him, now people say, people are going to think I'm crazy at home. Like, why would you give him this number? I'm going to say he's a 6. Now, as far as shot blocking. He's got that much of room to grow. I am. His body's going to change. He's only, he came to, people forget this. He came to college a year early. He's supposed to be a senior in high school right now. So he reclassified to come to school a year early. His body's still going to develop. He's going to grow. He's going to fill out naturally. So, I mean, he has so much potential to grow. He had, his offensive game has gotten better since he's been at Kentucky a lot. So imagine how much better it'll get once he goes to the NBA. And I think the sky's the limit for him. I mean, he just, he's not the same. He doesn't have as much as ability as Anthony Davis does. But, I mean, as far as shot blocking, he's a, he's, a, he's a better shot blocker by far. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go to Ron. Ron, you're up on the Sunday Sports Bus. Hello, Greg and uh, Perrin. This is Radio Ron. Ron. Yeah, I recognize the voice. How you doing? <laughs> doing all right. Yeah, Perrin, I just had to call you, my, my media buddy. I never know where you're going to show up on what TV or radio station. <laughs> You're becoming a media nomad. I'm surprised he wasn't on a Super Bowl commercial. You know, I'm surprised you weren't starring in one, Perry. Yeah, I, 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 I hope I get paid like to be on a Super Bowl commercial one day. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, so do I. Well, I'm glad you finally got around to talking about the Cats tonight. But I really wanted to uh, talk to you about the Super Bowl. Did you have a favorite team, uh, Perrin, in that game? You know, you know, I don't. I'm not a Niners fan. Because I'm a Cowboys fan, and you know you can't be, you can't do both. So I don't, I don't like, I don't like the Niners. I like Ray Lewis. Um, you know, we're, there was a running joke with with some of my buddies. We were talking, and we said, you know, if you didn't go to church today, you were definitely going to get a sermon from Ray Lewis that they won this game. <laughs> so if you know, the only thing they didn't do was pass out collection plates for tithes and offering. At the Superdome, I'm sure. <laughs> but I mean, it was you know, it was good to see him go out on top. And yeah. He's a heck of a player. I hate to see um, Kaepernick lose, but like I said, because I'm a Cowboys fan, even though we <laughs> trick off every game at the last two minutes, I I can't cheer for the Niners. Well, the only reason I was pulling for the um, 49ers, my mother lived in San Francisco for a number of years, and she always cheered for Joe Montana. Back in the days, of course. And so I really thought, I was ready to go to bed at halftime, you know, when it, the, uh, it looked like the, the Ravens had it for sure. But yes. when they drove down to, what was it, the five-yard line, I thought surely that they would let the quarterback have the option of running it in. Mm -hmm. He had, and I've, I've never seen a faster quarterback. I was amazed at his quickness. You know what, I think, you know, remember the play, they almost got the, the uh, delay of game. Yeah. They called a timeout. I think that was a called running play for Pat Cap because I we talked about it earlier, Ron. Uh, I thought their play calling down there wasn't as good. I mean, they went away from Kaepernick, letting him do something with his legs. But it looked like they were going to call a running play for the quarterback there. Then they had to call the timeout and decided to go another direction. But man, that Kaepernick, he he he's takes so a stride. Oh, he takes two strides and it's about <laughs> he's halfway down the field. Yes. So, uh, Ron, thank you for uh, calling. We'll make sure to tune in and catch your uh, your act as well on KSTV, right, uh, yes, Ron? Yeah. He, yeah. Just, he was just in a movie recently. So, I mean, yes, Radio Ron, I wish, I wish we just had him on KSTV more, a lot more often. Uh, he does so many great things, so many great things. All right, we're taking your calls, 964-2121. Give us a call. we got one more segment here at the Sunday Sports Buzz presented by livingforless.org. Sports Buzz will return after these messages from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Jim Weeks. At MaxCare, no project is too big. We have the capabilities to handle the smallest residential project to the largest commercial undertaking. We even clean big houses like this one. And everyone has been a buzz about our amazing four areas for $99 special. We want to let everyone know that MaxCare also cleans upholstery, ceramic tile, and air ducts. We also install and refinish hardwood floors dust-free. Max Care, locally owned and family operated. Give us a call, 636-4629. Smart shoppers, this is how you roll. 
Get everything you need to make that old ride look new again at Smart Shoppers, the region's largest auto body supplier, providing you the full line of professional grade materials at the best prices around. Paint like the pros with a full line of House of Color paint products only at Smart Shoppers, because this is how you roll. Joe here for Joe's OK Bayou. There are two things I've learned in the almost 20 years of doing business. First, every Cajun has their own secret recipe to a good gumbo. And second, I never claim to be better than Mama's cooking. We've been cooking up true Cajun for a long time now, and I think we're starting to win over some moms. Well, there might be a few tough moms out there yet to convince, but we're making progress. Stop in today and see for yourself how we measure up to moms. Joe's OK by you. It's OK by me. I mean, Mama. Strength when I am weak. For the warmth when I am cold, I turn to you. I turn to Jesus. Call or go online now for more information on inpatient and outpatient programs at the City of Hope Recovery Center. Hey, Jenny Merriman here from 21 Live, and it's a fresh new year, and we have fresh new deals for you. Everything that you need for 2013 from head to toe, literally. You can find it all the time if you stop by our website, shop21live.com. We know that you have New Year's resolutions. Maybe you're off course. We've got all the best deals from Kentuckiana to get you back on track. So check out our website, shop21live.com. And, of course, watch us here on ION Saturday mornings at 10. We hope that you like the Sunday Sports Buzz uh, here every Sunday night at 11. Make sure you also, if you like it tonight, tune in Tuesdays and Fridays. I call in Mason and Myers in the morning. That's Jeff Mason and Rashawn Myers. That is definitely the odd couple of Louisville Radio. <laughs> and uh, a, a segment brought to you by Insuramax. Chad now in Hennessy, 479-4085. For all your home life and auto needs, these two guys are the best in town. They'll take care of you. Uh, they'll 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 analyze your situation and do whatever they can to service you. Uh, great people, you can trust them. Chad and Allen Hennessy at Insuramax. Another guy you can trust is sitting right next to me. His name is Perrin Johnson. He's the new host of the uh, afternoon uh, show on 1450 The Sports Buzz from four to five with our good buddy Trevor Kelsey. Starts tomorrow. So make sure you tune in to uh, Perrin. And we got full phone lines. Dennis is up first on the Sunday Sports Buzz. Hello, Craig. Hey, Dennis. I want to get back to the Louisville for just a second. Okay. I heard Perrin say a while ago that Louisville fans don't need to worry because they have their January slump. Well, I don't know if he realized it or not, but Louisville hadn't won a championship through those slumps. They haven't even played for one, so I think Louisville does have a reason to worry, the fans. Uh, well, Dennis, I, I'm even going to battle you a little bit on that. Not battle you, but we've been to the Final Four. I think that the champion, getting to the Final Four, to me, is the standard. Whatever you do after that is a luck of the draw in many respects. Yes. But getting there is the barrier, is the Final Four. You're, he's right. We, Louisville hasn't won the championship. Is this... It, I think Louisville's entering a little bit of a window here where, where we might have three or four years of, of really great teams. I think, is this the window to I, get it done I, right I, here I for Coach so. Pitino? I think so. Uh, you know, with, with the whole, what Cal, what Cal is doing down the street, he, he's, he's going to two Final Fours in the last three years. So, I mean, I think it's put pressure on us to go. We went this past year, and he got a national championship last year, so it's time for us to get one. I think Louisville fans, since we haven't had one in 86, since 86, so we're, we're thirsty to get one right now. And, um, you know, a lot of people forget, though, Final Fours do not grow on trees. You know, Kentucky didn't go to a Final Four for 12, 15 years before they went this past, like two years ago, before they won the national championship this past season. So, I mean, you know, like I said, Louisville fans always do the same thing. We win a lot of games early. Everybody loves it. Rick Pitino becomes a bad coach in January. Yes. He's not a good coach. And then... <laughs> 
Everybody loves him. Oh. They can't believe what he does at the Big East tournament and in the and in the NCAA tournament. It happens every last year. Time. And last year is Exhibit A of that. After that Final Four run, his Rick yes. is Rick is touch everything he touches is gold. Yeah. At, after that, it's, at that it's, point. Always, it's always the same. Thing. But yeah, same script, same mm-hmm. script. We'll make a run here, but it's about ready to start. I think today might be the start of it. Yes. Beating Marquette. Let's go to Cardinal Jack. Cardinal hey, Jack, you're up. How's it going, guys? How's it going? Uh, parent and big fan of your man, uh, each little fan. Uh, Appreciate it. I just want to say that, I mean, Louisville started out top five for a reason. Um, I think that they're coming out of the slump now. I think that today was a huge turnaround and a big performance because Marquette has proved that they can play with just about anybody. Florida was their only bad loss on the whole year. But um, I just wanted to say that um, I feel like Louisville's going to get things turned around, and I really do think Louisville's going to – bring it home this year, and I think for the next five, six years, Louisville's going to be a team to reckon with every year, because Patino's building our program back to the way it used to be. So, just wanted to say that and get you popped on that, guys, and like the show. Y'all have a good one. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Cardinal Jack. we got a couple callers we want to get to before the end of the show. Lee, you're up. We might have to give a couple seconds to get on the line. Um, But, uh, Lee, are you up now? Okay, we'll be there in a second with Lee, Cardinal Jack, uh, thinking this might be uh, the, uh, uh, the Cardinals, uh, the, the window, mm-hmm. I think, to get something done. Yeah. Louisville versus Indiana. Real quick, Perrin. I know Indiana looked great the other night. Yes. I just think, though, in a matchup with Louisville, I give Louisville a shot because the defense would make Indiana look ugly. Yeah. Louisville will ugly up the game. Yes. Any offense, and I think if you get in a scramble, a turnover – Late in game, scrambling mm-hmm. around. That's if Louisville can do that, they can beat anybody. Well, I'm not even gonna go into detail, and I'll put it to you like this: We offered to go play them. The, Tom Crean said no. We offered to go to Assembly Hall, and Tom Crean said no. So he knew what he was gonna get into yeah. if he played us. So I mean, that says it all myself. He has to play the Big Ten schedule, but he wanted he wanted to play Kentucky, and they didn't play Kentucky. And we offered to fill that void, and they said no. So that tells you what they wanted with us. They wanted no part. All right. Hey, Lee, you're up. Yes, sir. I want to say Louisville is like the Kentucky Derby. Because uh, in March, when these horses start to run, it's anybody's race. And uh, Rick Pitino, he got some big horses in the Derby coming up. And he named them Gorgie, Steve, and Russ Dickless. So uh, when it comes down to March, I think we're going to end up with the Roses. <laughs> it's all about the matchups. It's all about the matchups, man. You know, I, I got a new name Perrin coming along the way. Next year's Derby. Yeah, new. He got, he's got a new Colt. Oh, he's not naming. Bar. He's not naming anything <laughs> after <laughs> me. <laughs> he's not naming anything after me. <laughs> hey, before <laughs> we're almost done, I want to get Terry up if I can. Terry, you got about ten seconds to make a comment before the show is over. But you're our most loyal caller, Terry. Hey, how you doing? Real quick. Yeah. Uh. I'm, I'm confused. We got 10 seconds. Okay, I'm confused about Rick's suit. He swore up in there he wasn't going to wear it. And Gorgie said he, he was going to talk to him. We got three seconds. I agree. Coach can't even. The suit. He told everybody we're going to wear a suit. Wear the suit. Look good, though. We'll see you next week.